Um, hello, everybody. My name is Ahmed Hindawi. I'm the United Nations Secretary General's envoy in New York. Speaking today from uh, Costa Rica, we are, we are meeting here for a uh, Bayon 2015 Global Youth Summit. So we are meeting here with a brilliant young people coming from all over the world. More than 500 participants, they are here to debate about the role of ICT to, to be an enabler for achieving the world we want. We are debating post-2015 development agenda. And I would like to take this opportunity, as I asked the organizers, to organize an informal discussion with some of the people and the participants who are members of the drafting committee. Uh, it's a brilliant group. We met yesterday, and uh, we decided today to have this informal discussion so we can talk more about what do you think are your priorities for post-2015 development agenda? Uh, how have your experience here, I mean, influenced your thoughts about uh, the role of this development agenda in shaping uh, the world we want and how we can contribute as individuals, as youth organization does. And also, I'll be looking forward to, to have your questions and to discuss with you how we can make this event a big success and make sure that we follow up with the conversation we are having here. So how about we start with a round of uh, introduction just to introduce ourselves and maybe Trevi, you can start. Sure, so um, I'm Trevi. Um, I um, am from the US, so I'm a US youth delegate yeah. here. Um, I'm studying at Dartmouth College, so I'm finishing my final year. And I spent this past summer representing the United States on the advisory board for this uh, youth summit. Excellent. Okay, my name is Eda Montes. Mm -hmm. I'm from Mexico. I study at Tecnológico de Monterrey. Yeah. And this past year, I was uh, at mm -hmm. I was an exchange at the University of Geneva, mm -hmm. and I was also um, an intern mm -hmm. at the Mexican Mission in Geneva. Yeah. Um, well, I'm uh, Jose Callasco. I'm actually uh, Costa Rican. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's really great to have you all guys here. Uh, we're yeah. thrilled. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, so um, I spoke at the, late, at the last TEDx here in Costa Rica, and I'm, I've been involved with, with ICTs, and actually that's what I do for a living, so um, it's, it's really exciting to be here. Uh, I'm Felicity. Um, I just finished my master's at Cardiff University, and now I'm interning at the ITU in Geneva. Uh, my name is Fatim Chowdhury. I'm coming from Canada, and I'm studying at the University of Waterloo uh, in environmental studies. So I'm, I'm thinking about starting this conversation, and thank you all for being here. I was thinking about starting the conversation about the team itself, and how important for young people to come and meet and debate the role of ICT. And first I see, I mean, at least four tablets and PCs, and just like uh, laptops here. And uh, I see, I mean, we can't talk about young people anymore without talking about the role of ICT. I mean, we can't mention ICT without mentioning, I mean, how important the role of young people to, to drive the innovation in this, in this field. So. What's your take from this conference? It's the second day I know I was still debating the outcome doc document. Uh, but um, what do you think of the conference so far? Well, I, I think it's, I think, I mean, uh, I think it's the first time that we have such, a, such an event here. Um, it's been thrilling for me particularly, you know, to come here and just meet with mm. people from uh, do dozens of different countries around the world or people that you would, or countries that you've probably never even heard of, or, or I mean, people that you would never thought you would meet. And that you're probably not gonna see again for a while. Um, but I think that uh, having this sort of this conversion of young, of great young minds, uh, I think that everyone here is is here for a reason, and mm -hmm. I mean, just earned their pass into the into the summit for a reason. Mm -hmm. So just I think I think the people is probably what I think is the coolest thing. I mean, just this the, this big uh, mix up of people, and I think that great stuff can come out of it. Excellent. What do you think? Um, I think the summit has highlighted how important technology is to young people and I think it shows that um, if we weren't connected, if we, d if we weren't online, we wouldn't know about it, but we don't realise all the people who aren't online who don't know about it, mm -hmm. so we should connect all the people who aren't connected so they can have the benefits that we do. Sure. Uh, yesterday I called the ICT as an invisible tool yeah. for those who have it, uh, but if you don't have it you realise I mean, how much... Uh, lacking behind. We're talking about two third of two third of the world population are still offline, and yeah. uh, I think this is a shame, right? I think it's surprising as well. I think a lot of people would be surprised to know yeah. that people don't have phones with the internet or they don't have laptops. Yeah, we we'll take it like for that. granted because yeah. it's easy for us. Yeah. To yeah. Answer, right? um, what I was what I was thinking about was that I, I just participated in the hackathon for the last what, 24 hours. And uh, one of the mentors was talking about the fact that we should really understand the problem that we're trying to solve um, with, through technologies. And I think that the role of ICT is about how, can, how we can uh, use technology appropriately to solve the problem and have the impact that we want to have. So mm. um, that's something I've been thinking about from 
since being here, and it's mm -hmm. been very insightful. Any great ideas? Uh, oh, from, from the hackathon? Yeah, yeah. Actually, the presentations are going on right now, okay. so uh, you'll hear a lot, a lot of great ideas. I've been hearing like peaks and I look forward, ideas. after 24 hours of man's labor, <laughs> continue thinking about ideas. I look forward to see the results. Uh, so, what do you? Yeah, What's your? Oh, sure. Well, um, for me, I mean, the summit has been incredibly invigorating. I think just meeting so many bright, motivated right. people from around the world. And again, you know, from places mm -hmm. that, um, for me personally, I haven't really interacted with um, before. So that's been, I think, a very inspiring experience. Um, for me, what's most important is engaging young people in the international decision-making mm -hmm. process. And I think we have a very sort of, we have many very unique perspectives to bring mm -hmm. to the table. And, um, not only that, but skill sets and mm. um, knowledge bases and means of approaching the world. I think for many of us, um, the world is no longer sort of delineated in a very sort of, you know, a mm. national or international. Yeah. You know, many of us are continually crossing boundaries. And so I think it's very important that this voice is represented in the international policy making process. Um, I, I really want to give a shout out to um, the fact that, uh, I mean, representing the United States on the uh, Biden 2015 Advisory Board, mm. it was really great to see how so much of the grunt work for this summit mm. was um, carried out by young people. So this is really a summit that has been put together to a large extent by young people for young people, and that's something that, for me personally, is incredibly mm -hmm. inspiring. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the results, mm -hmm. because uh, having such, such a, a great variety of people, mm -hmm. of backgrounds, I think we can expect amazing ideas coming from, from all over the world. And for example, I was I participated in the jam session, which was like an event previous to, to this one in Geneva. And the ideas that came out of this event were amazing, like mm. in, in five hours. So I just I, I'm really interested in knowing like after three days um, what great ideas can come out of, of this whole process. No, I would like to tell you a secret. Uh, I'm meeting young people since, I mean, I've uh, been on youth work since I was 15 years old. I went to so many youth conferences and events. And there are sometimes, I mean, we attend youth conferences and start calling others to act. So we think the most important part of the conference, calling others to act, governments, private sector, we call up on, I mean, the United Nations to do, and that's okay, I mean, that's important for you to voice and to, to I mean, say what exactly you think is important to be done. But I think what's extremely important is defining what the participants themselves are going to do. Because I mean, we are not a passive actor in, in this process. It's not for you just to call others to act. I here represent the United Nations. I'm very interested in taking, I mean, these recommendations and uh, to learn more about what we can do together. But I mean, if you give me one recommendation, that will be fine, okay. This is important. It will influence my work. But if you give me idea for us to work together, that would be, uh, I mean, something that we can directly impact the life of so many young people around the world. So I'm always, I'm trying to push this. I'm fighting this, uh, I would say, uh, passivity somehow in the way that we, we call others only to act on. Sometimes we forget that we have a share in this. So do you think we can, we can come up with some concrete ideas out of this summit? Not only for others to act, but for the participants, the 500 participants, to do something together? I, I, think, I think that's probably, um, what, what, what we should take in, or mm -hmm. I mean, what everyone should take in from the conference. Uh, I mean, just realize that you're, first, firstly, you're not alone in, mm -hmm. in wanting to change the world uh, mm -hmm. somehow, one way or the other, in, 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 each, in, each, in each his own way. Um, uh, but the fact that there's, I mean, just the fact that there's other 500 people that had, I mean, that came all the way to here uh, for the conference and that, and that you have the support of them and that you can. Not, I mean, not only just be inspired by them, but literally just be in touch with them, have them help you. I mean, have them be a contact in that country that you that you never knew. Uh, I think that's that's amazing on on the, on the power of of mm. these five hundred people here and how can they inspire others around them. So um, uh, I think that it, it's definitely. I mean, the world's gonna be is gonna be ours uh, in mm. a few years. I mean, we're we're gonna be the old ones, and let's hope that. Um, Let's hope that we keep being young in, in, in the fact that we inspire ideas and that we come up with, with amazing stuff to, to do. Uh, young, I mean, being young is an attitude to life as yeah. well. Right? So you need to keep this attitude when you uh, accept change and you are willing to be part of uh, transforming things as well, not to keep things as they are, right? Mm. Um, I, I would like to discuss with you, if you don't mind, I mean, uh, more about your priorities for post-2015 development agenda. 
an issue that is important to all of us, for the UN system, for member states, and also for many civil society organizations. And as you said, it will be ours, uh, I mean, our world that we need to carry and we need to, to protect. So what do you think I mean, should be done? I mean, what are the priorities? And let's talk a bit about post-2015 development agenda. What do you think is important for young people in, in this development agenda, why it's important as well? I have my answer, but I would like to hear from you as well. I think, uh, as was mentioned yesterday, I think mm -hmm. it's really important that this time no one is left behind. Mm -hmm. you know, because like, um, even though many of the goals were accomplished uh, in many countries like Brazil, China, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. other countries, especially sub-Saharan ones, were mm -hmm. a little bit left behind in, mm -hmm. in many of the aspects. So I think it's important this time to not to let them uh, mm -hmm. behind in the whole process. Mm -hmm. okay, like somehow um, make um, the, the accomplishment of the goals more even mm -hmm. among the countries, I think. What do you think? I think for me, um, one of the key goals should be empowering youth. And what I mean by that, I mean more specifically, education. And education can be both um, more, I guess, classical sense, but also educating young people in the skill sets mm -hmm. that will enable them to compete and um, engage in the modern economy. And I think especially today, you know, we are still recovering from you know, a recent economic crisis. Yeah. And one thing that governments around the world are starting to recognize is the incredible power both of young people but also of youth entrepreneurship. Mm. Of course, there's also a danger to this. The fact that um, unemployment, mm. especially among youth, um, can, uh, can bring great instability. But at the same time, it's an incredible opportunity for us yeah. to find new ways of um, putting young people to work and encouraging young people to develop their own businesses and use their unique perspectives to pursue new avenues that might per previously have not been considered. I fully agree. I think it's important. Uh, you know, I, I think one of the issues we have with uh, many education systems we have around the world that they are so good in uh, graduating job seekers, not job inventors and uh, job creators. And uh, if you look now to the projection we're talking about, more than 500 million jobs need to be created in 15 years. And for me, nobody can create alone, I would say, uh, this number of jobs. So we need to change the discourse. We need to move from job seekers to a generation of job innovators and to make sure that they are uh, entrepreneurs and they are supported. But uh, they need to be supported as well. To be an entrepreneur, that, uh, to realize that you have so many challenges around you, but you are not I mean, giving up you continue to fight and to find a way to, to make it work. That's what makes an entrepreneur. I mean, there's no entrepreneur without being challenged. If everything is available, you can't be an entrepreneur because it's an easy job for you to get it. And you yourself as an entrepreneur, yeah. so tell us. Um, <laughs> being an entrepreneur is, is hard. Um, I mean, it's, it's the greatest thing, I mean, it's the greatest thing I've ever done. And it's, it's, it's been a, it's such a learning experience mm -hmm. since I moved from an office desk job to sort of entrepreneurship. Um, I think that entrepreneurship is definitely not for everyone, and and, and this is one curious thing. Like we as an we as entrepreneurs, we still need people to I mean to do the to do the job that we create, right? So not everyone can be an entrepreneur. Um, in here in Costa Rica, in particular, um, I mean it's I, I think Costa Rica is is leading Latin America in innovation, and, and we're ve we're very proud of that. But still, our educational system is very very much f uh, focused on creating job seekers. Mm. That is and. It amazes me. I think it, I think that, that there's there should be a shift to that. Mm -hmm. I had the chance to meet and w one other thing that's on, on the subject of, of mm -hmm. education. I had the chance to meet Osman Riaz, which is a Pakistani, uh, literally like a, a prodigy musician, and on a, he spoke on a, on a TEDx here. He's a TED fellow, mm -hmm. um, and his story, his amazing story, was the fact that he learned. I mean, he became this prodigy through YouTube. Like he'd never had any formal education because he ha he didn't have access to that in Pakistan, and now mm -hmm. he's like he literally travels the world playing his music because he's literally like a music genius and this is this is one thing that I think is gonna sh is, is, is gonna shift soon I, I'm, I'm really not sure how it's gonna happen yeah. but like traditional education is gonna change we have the internet now and even though right now like sort of graduating from the internet is not credited as 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 a job or as a title mm -hmm. I think it's gonna be very very soon and we're, we're sort yeah. of traveling to that right now we're there's people doing jobs that didn't exist ten years ago or, or five years ago you know uh, the whole social media movement and so on so these kind of jobs, I mean, the, the, the only school you have is, is the internet, so it's... You know, I was reading an article about uh, uh, jobs that will be needed in 10 years. And some of them, they sound very crazy to me, but <laughs> I think they will be very much needed. So, and some jobs that we think are prestigious now, they will be irrelevant in the, 
a few years, maybe, yeah. at least if you want to think. I mean, we have education and also nobody left behind. I think it's mm -hmm. also including fighting poverty. Uh, but what do you think also is important? Um, I agree with the not leaving people behind. I think it's important to try and connect as many people as we can. But I also think it will be useful to establish when the post-2015 agenda, how we're going to look at MDGs. Mm -hmm. Are we going to look at them on a global scale, mm -hmm. a national le level or like mm -hmm. local? Is everyone going to be working together, you know, so people don't get left behind or are people going to be ahead of others because they're concentrating mm -hmm. on different areas? Because mm -hmm. not every country is affected by the same M MDGs, right. so how do you work together to solve them? Here was uh, the challenge, but there are so many issues that are global mm -hmm. now, challenges, as, uh, including the one with climate change, for example, and uh, I think it would be interesting to see, I mean, the universality aspect of uh, post-2015 development agenda, how it will be articulated as well. Yeah. yeah. So, what do you think? So I'm glad you brought up climate change because that's kind of what uh, really is my mm -hmm. um, interest and I'm glad that this conference is putting so much emphasis on mm -hmm. um, environmental sustainability which is one of the MDG goals um, and extending from Rio plus 20 last year uh, where I was able to kind of see how the policy decisions were being made and um, how sustainable development and the green economy kind of these terms kind of um, are now driving the conversations at the high level panel mm -hmm. and um, so for me I think that's really a key priority is like mm -hmm. for long term uh, sustainable growth that we ensure that mm -hmm. um, we make sure that there are concrete solutions for climate change and environment because these are systemic problems that's going to affect people, uh, local farmers, uh, you know, in impoverished countries and um, mm -hmm. so for me I think that's something that I'm really interested in um, seeing how the, the conversations move forward. Yeah. Well, the climate change is something very important to be mentioned here. You know, uh, the Secretary General of the United Nations made uh, one of his priorities achieving a globally binding agreement, a legally binding agreement by 2015. And he invited world leaders next year to meet in New York at the time of the General Assembly to join forces and make sure we achieve this, uh, uh, in our efforts to achieve this legally binding agreement uh, on the climate change. And uh, I like how he defined the uh, word leaders. He said, I mean, word leaders including young leaders, including private sector e leaders. So everybody is invited to be part of that conversation. I think it's very important to use, uh, again, ICT and making sure that we, we, we need to negotiate with each other to find agreement. Because at the end of the day, you can't negotiate with the planets, right? You need, we need to find a way that uh, we, we make the planet more sustainable. Uh, maybe before we close, I would like to ask you to challenge me and to ask me as well if, uh, if there is a way. Uh, as uh, your envoy to the United Nations, I can be helpful as well. And if there are any idea that I can uh, uh, adopt and I can implement uh, to make sure that your voices uh, uh, are brought to the United Nations, that, uh, the, to the all I mean, avenues where we are debating some global issues and uh, the governance issues. Uh, so the floor is yours. Tell me, I mean, how I can be more helpful to you as well. I have a question for you. Yeah. <laughs> in general. Yeah. Um, so, how would you say that the concept of development has changed since 2000, since uh, like first MDGs? How 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 is the post 2015 agenda be going to be is going to be different from the original MDGs? How 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 has it how has it changed? I think I can't speak about the process. But I mean, the end results is not clear yet because they're still debating the end results. So this question can be answered in one year time, maybe, or two years, when we have the post-2015 development agenda clear. So we can see what's the difference in trends and issues. But I can speak about the process. The process is different in the sense that we have now a very inclusive process, and fully participatory at all levels. I mean, everybody participated, online, offline, yes. regional. That was not the case in MDGs itself. And I think it's very important. If you want people to commit themselves to the implementation, they better own the thing. So I think there's a great sense of ownership now of the post-2015 development agenda. So this is major shift. And uh, I think this, I mean, having young people and all global citizens are influencing, I mean, the debate is very important. And this reinforced the, the notion of a glo I mean, uh, global citizenship, that you are not only a citizen of your country, but you are a global citizen, and you have the right as well to contribute with your thoughts about what should be done at the global level. So before we finish, just, I mean, a yes. few words about what do you think should be done. Sure. I think. Um just going back to your original question just now, mm -hmm. I think it'd be, uh, for us, it'd be fantastic to have um, you help us advocate for some kind of sustained structural mechanism by which young people can 
have their voice heard. I mean, this summit has been mm -hmm. incredible in mm -hmm. that regard, and it's generated an incredible amount of energy and yeah. ideas. You know, many, many ideas over the mm -hmm. past two months, you know, leading up to this event and up here at the event itself. And I'd really love to see um, this kind of energy and this kind of input from you no, sustained. Way. Exactly. Structural way. Exactly. Structural mechanisms. I'm a big promoter for structural mechanism. Mm -hmm. And I, if you follow some of the news we have, I think we have some exciting yes. announcements uh, for, for more structural mechanism mm -hmm. to work with the United Nations. In one sentence, Egypt. So how it can be helpful? So I think going off uh, what uh, Travi is mentioning, I think like positive feedback loops where mm -hmm. it's a reiterative process where um, the conversation doesn't end after, you mm -hmm. know, like you ask for the voice of youth right. and you get it and then you, there's a document that comes out. I think yeah. like making it a more reiterative process will mm -hmm. allow us to, will allow you to feel that their voice are being heard and Absolutely. implemented. And so, so to help hold the United Nations and governments accountable to their commitments. Mm -hmm. So you're not only, I mean, sharing what you think, but you are, I mean, holding them accountable to, right. uh, to the implementation of their commitments as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I wonder if you will make this Global Youth Summit an annual event, so you continue well, to mm -hmm. collect okay. ideas. I promise to, to, to <laughs> take this and discuss it with ITU. This is a promise. Okay. I don't know if ITU will thank me for that. <laughs> no, 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 I'm wrong. I'm sure we'll, we'll discuss it definitely. I hope by the end of I mean, this summit we'll be able to, to find a way to sustain it as well. Yeah. I think, I think uh, the internet has given us like, great examples on mm -hmm. how people have collaborated. Uh, you see, for example, crowdfunding, crowdsourcing. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that uh, we, I mean, we people here, and I mean, I mean we youth, can I mean can can use this as a tool mm -hmm. uh, to communicate? I mean to get to get to get messages ahead. I mean it's been done before in, in the internet, but uh, I think uh, through ITU, I think there could be like a bigger like a bigger close up. I mean if you're if you're working with directly with the UN on a crowdfunding campaign or a crowdsourced campaign, in which a uh, million people want this or that. I think I think that is one particular way in which like okay. youth can not only like move their peers mm -hmm. to to act on something but to, I mean, to get the message out to you guys. I absolutely agree, and I think it's just time to move our momentum from being a, just a virtual momentum to link it with, the, with real action. This is exactly what I like about this conference. I think, I mean, it's linked between uh, a great momentum here in Costa Rica happening with all the participants, but there are great momentum happening online as well with, with the crowdsourcing and with, with all the contribution we received and, and social media. So I think this is very important to continue after this uh, event. Make sure that the outcome document is a roadmap for action, not only calling others, but also committing ourselves to actions. I look forward to continue working very closely with you. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here in Costa Rica and to have this uh, refreshing dialogue uh, for this uh, creative concept of having youth engagement with ITU and um, uh, with the government of Costa Rica and also with uh, so many I mean, other partners who are sponsoring this event. Um, I'm the Youth Envoy of the United Nations, Ahmed Hindawi. It's a great pleasure to be with you. Thank you very much. I look Thank forward you. to to work with you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. much.